Um, and then into, you know, the Google Sheets, the third part of the tool, why I chose that. Um, you know, if you, if you think about it, well, at first when I started doing, uh, working with the Tesla APIs, when I, I mean, I was really just trying to figure out how to do this calculation for this smart charger, right? Um, and I tried to do it in Google Sheet to figure out how to do that first. Um, and it, it was kind of complicated because uh, I actually had two Teslas and they're configured on a load sharing um, configuration. So depending if both are probably plugged in and or if one's finished charging, they have different rates of charge. So to calculate the when they'll finish, um, you know, to stop at the same time in the morning versus starting at the same time is actually a little bit more complicated. And I, I you know, I needed to try to do it on a spreadsheet first. So that's one of the reasons why I just happened to start with Google Sheet. And then once I got it to work, I was able to incorporate real-time data using the APIs into that Google uh, Sheet, as well as using this uh, Google App Script to write that information. Um, so that's that was part of why I I was using the Google Sheet. And then <clears throat> at some point, I did think about refactoring, and or just rebuilding everything into a database, but. The Google Sheets is just way too convenient. For anyone who works with data and uses spreadsheets, you'll find that, <clears throat> you know, the convenience of the spreadsheet or the Google Sheet is just, it's just, oh, you know, overwhelming. Um, because sometimes I need to manually manipulate the data, and because you know the service doesn't work, 100% in all cases, probably because, you know, some of the features aren't available. Probably it's because I'm not an awesome developer. For a variety of reasons, I need to sometimes manually manip manipulate the data. Um, if I did add or change formulas on the fly, it's much easier to do in a spreadsheet, obviously, than do it in code or in a database. Um, I want to view the data sometimes. I want to connect it to other sheets that I have calculations, which I'll also other share. And then the other very obvious one is to create charts and graphs. It's so much easier in a spreadsheet, obviously. So to have that information sitting in a spreadsheet um, had a lot of benefit for me personally. So, uh, you know, I, I think you could still do this in a, in a database and, and whatnot, so up to you. Um, but any one of these pieces can be, other than the Tesla API part, you can swap out however you want to access the information, how you want to do the computations and calculations, how you want to store the data, all those elements, you can use other things for that. You don't have to um, use Google or anything like that. And I don't work for Google. I'm not endorsing them or anything like that. I just found it to be personally very, uh, very convenient. So now that I've described the tools I've used, I wanted to go into some of the features or things I did with those tools using the Tesla API, uh, using Google Sheets. You know, what am I doing with that? What's this project entail? And so I made a list here, and uh, I'll quickly go through them, go into uh, the next segment into way more detail about how I actually wrote the code to do this thing and, and uh, tell you about some of the challenges I encountered and where I was able to make some breakthroughs. So um, briefly going through um, this, this list here. So first of all, as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest things I was trying to figure out is how to calculate the charge time uh, to finish at a certain time versus start at a certain time based on its current uh, range as well as the target level I'm trying to charge to. And it works for two vehicles, which is the harder part. If it was just one vehicle, um, it would be much simpler. Um, and then you know, second then, I uh, was able to add a trigger to have it start at the correct time so that it finish at the time I wanted to. Um, and I wanted to do it, um, uh, you know, there's also a check to make sure if the car was at home, because if not at home, um, it probably isn't plugged in or I'm out somewhere. And that in itself is inherently very error prone, but I guess I'll get into that. Um, and part of figuring out whether it was at home, I had to calculate the distance using the GPS location, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the car had, and I have to figure out how to do that calculation. So that was a little bit <laughs> of a journey. Um, the, the next feature, number four here, was about sending me an email if the car wasn't plugged in. So um, like I said, I've, this, this, this pro project works fairly well if you have <clears throat> a very consistent um, driving and charging routine. So I'm not going out of town or... Um, <clears throat> taking the car out uh, for overnight or anything like that. So I always bring it, drive it out, you know, a reasonable amount of miles, bring it home, charge at night, and I'm not out, you know, past midnight or anything like that. So I'm usually home 
and charred, you know, plugged in by like 10 p.m. at the latest, right? So uh, if I haven't done that by then, you know, I want an email to notify me, to remind me, like, hey, charge it in because you need it tomorrow to go to work, right? So that's kind of the, the purpose behind number four there. Um, and then <clears throat> with all that data, as I showed you in the earlier part, it has a lot of information, and so I want to track it and analyze it. Uh, things like mileage, efficiency, um, what was the relationship of, you know, the efficiency relative to the temperature, um, you know, these like, things like that. So um, I'm probably only hitting, you know, scratching the surface on some of the data that could be tracked and logged or, you know, I want to do that, but I'll show you sort of what I did with that. And then, <clears throat> you know, like I said earlier, the odometer reading, average miles, um, and then sort of what that means <clears throat> implies for the estimated annual mileage. Um, tracking the efficiency, how much energy I use, that's kind of a tricky thing. I'm not sure if that's an exact science um, based on information I have, but I'll share with you my insights on that. And this thing, um, this battery capacity and degradation, <clears throat> I've seen people talk about it, and it's interesting how the software calculates it, and I'm not sure how accurate that is either, but it's interesting seeing how that fluctuates. Um, then I started creating charts for the vehicle data, which is also uh, kind of interesting, insightful, insightful to see visualization of that. Um, looking at temperature, I'm not sure how important that is, but certainly I think that has an impact on efficiency. efficiency. Um, and then I found that uh, a lot of these, the way the API works, if the car goes to sleep, which it does quite often to, to preserve the, the battery charge, um, you have to send it a wake command. So, um, you know, uh, you know, I think, I think that was one thing I had to kind of overcome. Um, but also, uh, I was doing it early on. I was doing it quite frequently in the code that I would wake it up multiple times. So I think um, I found a way to optimize the scripting so that I had to basically wake it up the least amount of times to get the information I needed. Um, you know, consistent exception handling, this is a fancy way of saying if something happens, an error happens, I have a, I have a, a standard way of uh, capturing what went wrong and then you know, fixing it or dealing with that uh, in certain cases. Um, and then if it fails, you know, how does it retry? Um, and then this one I didn't actually get to, but I'll talk about in the code about the maximum number of retries. It turns out there's sort of a built-in safety mechanism, but I'll go into why you may need to do that. Um, the error logging, like I mentioned earlier, how do I capture that information? Um, <clears throat> and then because I had to build my own log, um, I'll get into why couldn't use Google earlier, uh, later, but, um, you know, I want to get the log to be too large, so I want to delete certain things after, you know, 30 days or so. Um, there's some stuff I didn't get to. I think I mentioned earlier there's some limitation of this, so sometimes the car doesn't wake up, and so I'm not sure if there's a workaround I have to do with that, so I'm, I don't know what to do about that one yet. And then for road trips, um, if I supercharge or I charge kind of off schedule that I'm not in my routine where I plug in every night at 10 o'clock, like how do I handle that? Because this is schedule based, not event based. So it's not like I plug it in and all of a sudden it triggers something. That'd be awesome if you could do that. And if I could figure that out, then I could solve for some of these problems. But now I'm not sure how to deal with that. Um, and then I found a way to get all the data back from the, as I mentioned, there's one kind of superset you can get all the data. So if they added new information, you can kind of look through it found a way to get all that data and then write it into like a like a hierarchy in a way into a Google Sheet though I can <clears throat> so I can look through that uh, in a human readable more human readable format and then uh, there's some ways I was doing the calculation assuming that the battery capacity was always fixed but um, I changed it to based on what the, the Tesla battery management system what it thought the battery capacity was and I'll show you why I chose to do that or how I did that. And then like I said, I had to redo a bunch of things because I was just getting started, um, how I was re, uh, calling things over uh, over uh, multiple times when I could just probably do one call and wake the car up less amount of times, make the code run faster. Um, and then uh, that's you know, 21, 22. And then I have this other one where <clears throat> I just noticed that s sometimes uh, when I set the trigger to charge, um, but the car isn't going to charge because it's already at a certain charge level or it already completed, um, there's another status I can check so that uh, it won't bother to try to schedule that charge because it's not going to work anyway. So these are some of the features that I had 
built out. It's quite a bit. It, it took about a week and a half or two to do all these, but um, uh, this I just kept track of them because I was losing track myself. So this is a quick walkthrough of all the features that I have built into these, these scripts.